Get ready for Friday Night Football on WECT with Zach Solon. Sponsored by Corning Credit Union Mortgage and Hardee's. Round two of the state playoffs means the stakes are higher than ever before. This is where stars are born and seasons are ended. The playoffs are always win or go home, but if you make it to the second round, you're coming in with a little momentum, but only half the teams remaining can capitalize on that momentum. Let's get to the highlights, starting at Haggard. The Vikings hoping to push further into the playoffs, but Jordan stands in their way. Hudson Wilharm going to start with the ball here, and he's in the shotgun. Connects over the middle with John Mason, and he gets a first down and more. All he has to do now, once they get the ball reset, is hand it off to a trusty running back. And Hoggard, well, they've got plenty of those. This time it's Mikel Bellamy. He's got a ton of touchdowns on the year. Make that a ton and one as he trots into the end zone for six. They tack on a two-point conversion as well. Jordan's still trying to hang around in this game, though. They drop back to pass. A long throw is going to be picked off by Trey Nixon. Great concentration to jam the receiver and take it right from him. Moments later, Hogger going to be back on offense, and they are going to elect to hand it off to, well, not a running back. This guy's actually a receiver, Nas Session. He says tonight, class is in session. Even though there was no school today, he gets into the end zone in a hurry. Hoggard starting to really pull away in this one as the cheerleaders run those giant flags. Ratchet up on defense now. Jordan's quarterback scrambling and he is flattened by Malachi West. That makes Coach Underwood happy. Now the Vikings are just trying to take care of the ball. They get a good scamper down the field right here from Bellamy. This kid knows how to get some big yardage. Exactly the kind of plays you need in the playoffs. Hoggard tacks on a field goal late right here as they go on to win big again. That's now a 10 game winning streak for the Vikings. After losing their first game of the year, they are 39 and 16. Scratch that, that's an 11 game winning streak. They've got a date with Laney, their conference rivals next week. We'll have more on that coming up. Now out to West Columbus for a meeting of conference rivals with Pender and West Columbus. The Vikings hosting a second round playoff game for only the second time in school history. The only other time last year. So will their uprising continue? That question was answered early as Tristan Nuke Freeman gets the sack on third and long. First play from scrimmage for West Columbus. Jahan Lassane Powell goes 42 yards to the house. And the extra point would be blocked there. So 6-0 home team after that. But then Nuke Freeman, just like Micah Parsons or Mark Rawls right here, he recovers his own fumble. But look at that, a loss on the sack. Coach Lamont Williamson, he wants more from his number two seed team. That's going to set up one of the most unique players in the state, Unique Kelly, keeping it himself, breaking tackles, and he outruns everyone for six more. A 14-yard touchdown right there to go up 13-0. And then up, oh, there's that man again. Nuke Freeman does it on both sides of the ball, just creating atomic plays. This is a 52-yard touchdown run, putting the Vikes up 20 to nothing, still in the first quarter, and they just roll on from there. West Columbus had the bye last week, but they show no rust tonight. 54 to 6 to advance to the third round. And because they're the number two seed, they get a home game. They'll host Lakewood next week. Now out to Whiteville in the 2A bracket with Whiteville trying to dethrone the defending 2A state champions in East Duplin. Whiteville's up 14-0 late in the first half right here. On fourth and long, Luke Odom fires into the end zone and it's reeled in by Will Fisher. He hauls it from 29 yards out to make it 21-0. Now with the Whiteville cheerleaders having the excitement on a cool night, Keyshawn McKinney stuffs for a loss right here in the backfield by Dante Falk. Pack up 21 at the break, and the second half, here come the Panthers. Quarterback Zach Brown gets his toes in the water. Two-yard touchdown plunge gets East Duplin on the board, 21-7. Then the Panthers driving, looking for another score. Brown finds himself knee-deep in trouble, scrambling, and his pass right here is picked off by Caleb Johnson. That's a huge momentum swing. Odom right here, once we get back on offense, is going to do something just really cool looking. Something showing off when you're playing against the defending state champs. That's a behind-the-back handoff to Noopy Powell, who runs through the Panthers' defense for a 24-yard score to ice this one. 28-7, your final here. Whiteville takes down the defending state champions in East Duplin. That was East Duplin's second loss of the season. As for Whiteville, they're going on the road to take on Southwest Edgecombe next week.
Now back to the 4A bracket with the Ashley Screaming Eagles screaming onto the field for the first home playoff game in a long time. They are pumped to take on Fuquay Verena. The Bengals coming in from out of town. First play from scrimmage. That's Joshua Healy blowing up the play. The defense pumped on adrenaline with the nest behind them on this Friday night. And they are flying right here. Nate Hall gets the quarterback in the backfield and takes him down. That is how you like to start. He is amped up and the crowd is feeling good. The defense hands the ball over to their offense. Tyler Carter takes the snap, but he hands it right back to Fuquay Verena. That's a costly interception on your own side of a 50. Fuquay is going to make Ashley pay right here as they capitalize off that turnover. That's really disappointing after such a good defensive start. But hey, plenty of time left in this one. Ashley is going to regroup after this one, try and see what kind of play they can put together. But the drive would stall and Ashley would be forced to punt. But when we get back to the action, the snap is too high. The ball pinballs around and Fuquay falls on it. Yet Ashley's defense, you saw them at the beginning of this highlight reel. You think they're going to step up here? Oh, absolutely. The Screaming Eagles stand tall and keep Fuquay out of the end zone, holding them just to a field goal, which we're going to see in a minute right here. Fuquay nails it to go up 10-0 here. Ashley would tack on one late, but the final score here, the Bengals beat the Screaming Eagles 10-7. But hey, a great season for Ashley. Seven wins after only making the playoffs one other time in school history. Really something to be proud of. Dante Lombardi's team has a lot to look forward to in the coming years. Now let's head over to Leland and to the 3A bracket with North Brunswick hosting J.H. Rose. Scorps come in after a nail-biting one-point victory in the first round. First quarter, no score. Rampants go for it on fourth down, but Jason Shepard is taken down by a swarm of Scorpions. A defensive first half and really a defensive game in this one. Here's North on offense with T.T. Green trying to take it himself, but all he sees is a sea of white jerseys. Coach Brian Davis not happy about that. Rose back on offense now with Shepard looking to pass, but this one is picked off by Jamin Pigford. But the momentum would not shift as that drive would stop. So second quarter now, rampant ball. LeVar Sharp right here for North Brunswick, taking Shepard down. That was one of three sacks in a row for North Brunswick. But again, the Scorpions can't get anything on offense. So Rose gets the ball back after another North drive stalls. Towards the end of the half, the ground game finally starts to work. That's Jameer Roach for a first down near the end zone, and this time he finds pay dirt. That touchdown is good in the final minute of the half to put Rose up 7-0. North trying to make something happen, but T.T. Green can't complete this pass. This one a defensive battle, but J.H. Rose comes away with the 14-7 victory. North played two close playoff games this year, but their season ends here. As for Rose, they go on to take on one-seeded Havelock next week. Now back to the 2A bracket and out to Wallace Rose Hill. The Bulldogs are running out of this one to take on Hertford County. And it's the Bears that would score the first touchdown of the game here. Kayvon Rogers to Rimez Williams. Extra point good after that to go up 7 to nothing. Can the Wallace Rose Hill cheerleaders get something going? Bulldogs get them with a yardage handoff right here from Reed Page to Irving Brown. Look at this kid run. He can make anything happen. Well, except a touchdown here as that drive would stall. The Bears with the momentum now. Now the Bulldogs back on offense. They fumble and it's Williams coming out with the ball for Hertford County. And look at this. He goes all the way. That's a scoop and score for a touchdown. Not something you like to see. Extra point good. 14-0 road team, the 12 seed up on the 5 seed right now. Yeah, that's something to cheer about if you made the trip. Later on, it's Kevin Rogers sending it airmailing to Williams. These two guys just connecting all night. That's another touchdown. They would try for two, but it does not matter. This game, a really high-scoring affair. But the Hertford County Bears go to Wallace Rose Hill and upset the Bulldogs. And that means Wallace's season is over and Hertford will go on to play Nash Central next week. We've got so much more to get to. Plenty of more winners and plenty of more losers to go around, but so many more exciting highlights at our top plays of the week are coming up. Stick around. You're watching Friday Night Football on WECT. Let's go, Dogs!